Hey friends! My name is Desiree, aka Mama Friendly, and I do all sorts of videos on my channel, from cooking videos to planner videos, vlogs, hauls, homeschool videos with a Disney twist, a little bit of everything. So if any of that sounds like fun to you, I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on my YouTube adventure. Today's video is the monthly Foodie Friday collab hosted by Tiffany of Small Town 6. This is a monthly collab where there are no rules except to share a recipe of your choosing. So I'm taking advantage of this opportunity this month to share another one of my Cuban recipes. For the last couple of years now, I've been sharing at least one Cuban recipe a month, typically one that I have to adapt to make it gluten and dairy free because that's how I eat. But every once in a while, we are hashtag blessed with a recipe that is already naturally gluten and dairy free, so I am able to just make it and enjoy it without having to do any extra math. Today's recipe is sure to become one of your favorites, especially as the temperature warms up. I am showing you how to make my dad's ceviche. Now, in case you don't know, every country, every household has their way of making it, right? And I feel like I have to have that disclaimer in every one of my Cuban videos because there's always someone that's bound to say, well, my tia makes it this way or my mom makes it this way, and that's fine. This is more of an introduction in case you've never had ceviche before or you've never made it before. This is a fantastic recipe to have because it is it's just so delicious. It's so delicious, it's so simple, and it is very much a ceviche no matter where you go. But ceviche is essentially raw seafood of some sort, typically fish, a lot of the time shrimp, but I'm allergic to shrimp, so you're not gonna find that here. So you put this raw seafood into a vessel of some sort, typically with aromatics, onions, peppers, etc., and you cover it with an acid such as lime or lemon juice. And the acid itself is what cooks the seafood. So at no point does the seafood actually touch heat but it is not raw by the time you consume it because the acid penetrates the fish and not only makes it incredibly flavorful, but also completely cooked. So in that way, it's like a fun little science experiment as well. Great one to make with the kiddos and you're going to be enjoying the heck out of this recipe all summer long and beyond. Now, before I jump into the recipe, I do wanna remind you that because this is a collab, there is a playlist. So if you look in the description box, you're gonna find the link to Tiffany's channel and you're gonna find a link to said playlist so that once you've watched my recipe, you could see what all of my friends made this month too. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and show you how I made my dad's ceviche. So our ceviche adventure begins. I have my dad's instructions here in front of me. And by the way, how cute is he? Would you look at this? He actually put emojis <laughs> along the entire directions. He's just so cute, he's so extra. So he advised me to get a pound of white fish, either tilapia or corvina. I could not find corvina in any of the stores that DoorDash services. So I have a little over a pound of tilapia here. He also asked for two tomatoes, 10 limes. I got two pounds here. Two jalapenos or serrano peppers. I'm using jalapenos today. Half of a red onion. Cilantro. He didn't say how much. He just said cilantro. So I guess I have to just listen to the ancestors and stop throwing it in there when they say coño, yeah. Salt and pepper. Not pictured, but you can imagine I have salt and pepper in my house because most people do. Optionally, you can also have some cucumber and put it in there. I am not gonna do that today. Something that I am gonna add, which is another optional feature, is he said I could use a quarter cup of clamato. So this is gonna add a little bit of tomato flavor, a little more fishiness, I guess. I don't know because I've never drank this before in my life. But if my dad says to put it in there, then that's what I'm doing. So the first thing he wants me to do is to cut the fish into half inch cubes, put it in a bowl, and we're gonna add the lime juice to cover. So that means I'm squeezing all these babies. He always did it in a jar growing up and I thought that was such a cool look. So I'm gonna try to see if I can make this all fit in a jar. I might have to give up halfway through and just throw it in a bowl, but I wanna at least attempt it so it ends up looking the way that my dad's did. Okay, we've got clean hands, clean jar, clean everything. We got a lot of fish and I'm gonna do my best to chop this up into half inch pieces like he said. That looks, actually, that looks like it's about an inch. So let's not, let's make that a little smaller. I'm gonna cut this down the middle to make it a little easier on me. 
and that way I can just tuk, 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 all the way down. So this ended up being four fillets of tilapia. And now that I've done that, I'm just going to go boop, boop, boop into little sort of bite-sized chunks. I'm not going to actually measure this to see if it's a half inch, but I figure if it's about bite-sized, then we're probably okay. We're going to try to put this in this jar. It looked at first like it would all fit. Now I'm not so sure. But like I said, we're going to at least attempt it. And if it doesn't work out, then off we'll go to a bowl. Okay, Kiddo's on the trampoline, so he sounds like a madman over there. But I'm going to go ahead and throw my lemon juice into my jar of fish and I'm just gonna make sure that I've got enough limon in here to cover everything. I might actually put in even more. By the way, I'm cheating. <laughs> I decided I didn't want to cut all those limes after all, but this is actual lemon juice. It's not that artificial gaga. So I think that this is gonna be just fine. I want to make sure to put enough in here, as I was saying, to like cover the fish, but like cover it with more room to grow because we are going to end up putting more things in here. So I want to make sure that there's enough limon to cover everything when it's all said and done. And actually, I think I picked a pretty good sized jar because it looks like I am going to have enough space to put all the vegetation in here as well. That looks pretty good. I do have more lemons and of course I have the whole bag of limes over there if I decide I want more. But I'm going to go ahead and put this as it is into the fridge. My dad said that it needed at least a half hour. Um, I'm going to go into my son's therapy soon so that will be about an hour-ish. So I'll bring it out at that point. Alright friends, it's been about an hour. So far so good. So this is out of the fridge now. The next thing I want to do is cut my tomatoes. So my dad did say that he wanted me to use both tomatoes. And this is entirely not necessary, but I really like using my little veggie chopper. I try to get everything kind of evenly sized. So if you also would like to use a veggie chopper, I'll have this one linked down below. Every time I use this in a video, Somebody always asks where I got it or how they can get one themselves. So, like I said, it'll be down in the description box. But I'm just going to cut these tomatoes up in chunks so that I can pass them through here. I'm also removing the sticker. Everything's been washed. Is it just me that does that, whether it's tomatoes or, like, apples? Anything that you're going to end up eating the skin, even though it's washed, I always chop off the piece that the sticker touched. Just in case, you know, I'm sure that I don't need to do that. I'm sure that's like extra of me, but um, I don't know. I've just always done it that way. So I'm curious if I'm alone. So my tomato is in chunks here. This might not work for the tomatoes, actually. I don't think I've ever used this for something so soft. So I guess we'll see. Okay, no, that worked out. That's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and throw all the tomatoes through here. That's two whole tomatoes. Next, I'm gonna do my onion. And he did say to just use half. Usually when a recipe says, use half an onion, I completely ignore it and do the entire onion. <laughs> but because it's my dad, and I asked him for this recipe, I wanna make sure I do it exactly the same way he would. So, I will follow his instructions. I'm going to go ahead and do just the half onion. That one kind of, this half kind of fell apart a little bit, so this is going to be the one I use. Again, I'm just going to cut it in chunks that are a little more manageable for the choppy machine. And off it goes. That's half the onion. That really doesn't seem like enough to me, but again, I'm trusting my dad here. So I'm going to go ahead and empty this out into the jar because it's getting pretty full. 
and I still have to do, oh my goodness, what a mess. The, you know what? Don't, don't do this. This whole thing with the tongs, what was I thinking? Espadula. Let's go with una espadula. And even this might not be a great plan, but it doesn't help that my eyes are crying right now. Because even just cutting the onion in bits like I did to get it in here, that was enough to unleash the onion into my eyeballs. Yowza. And now here's where the brilliance of my plan gets a little bit muddy because the jar is getting pretty full and I still have to put jalapenos in here and the cilantro and presumably mix this up somehow and the mixing bit is the bit that I like how is that gonna happen so let's try our best I might regret this but is there even really a way it doesn't seem like it I think I'm gonna have to mix this up in a bowl with anything and then put it back into the jar once it's all mixed up. So I'm gonna clean up this mess I made here a little bit and I'm gonna do that. So the next thing we wanna do is put in our jalapenos. Make sure you wash your hands a lot while you're working with this because you do not want to touch your face, especially your eyes after messing with these. As a matter of fact, I probably should have used gloves, but it's a little late for that. And Papi did say to use two jalapenos I have two jalapenos, but I'm going to be so for real right now. I think I'm just going to use just use one because this just seems very, very spooky, very spicy to me. I'm more worried about what's going to happen when I inevitably touch my face than I am worried about the actual like flavoring, the actual heat of the jalapeno. But I am conozco and I know that I'm going to end up hurting myself with this. So. I don't know why I cut it into little strips either because I'm just going to throw it into the chopper anyway. That's what happens when you get distracted. This smells amazing. But all I'm thinking about is don't touch your face, don't touch your face, don't touch your face, don't touch your face. That's enough. Thank you so much for your service. Let's get everything out of here. This is actually like so dangerous it feels like because since the onion is messing with my eyes, all I can think about is rubbing my eyes. <laughs> so I've gone and washed my hands, but I still don't trust myself to do the right thing here. Last thing I need to chop is the cilantro and that I'm not going to use the chopper for because that just seems silly. So again, I don't really have a measurement here, but I really like cilantro, so I'm going to use a bunch. I'm just kind of choo -choo 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 -choo. watch your hands don't do the way i'm doing i'm doing it in a very dangerous bad way because i i'm terrible with a knife so be safe the camera battery died but as i was saying do as i say and not as i do be safe when you're cutting things no haga halo logo like me because you'll cut yourself Boof. Okay, that's a lot of cilantro, but that's exactly how I like it. And now I'm going to put in some salt and pepper to taste and my quarter cup of clamato. We got our big bowl, lots of salt. We are doing a lot of veggies and a whole pound, more than a pound of fish. So I think that's a good amount of salt. Lots of pepper. Obviously, if you're not sure, you could always lean to under seasoning it and just add more at the end. And lastly, the clamato, which I'm not sure about this, but again, I'm trusting my dad here. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of this either. I'm going to end up taking it to his house so he can make ceviche too, <laughs> because I'm for sure not going to drink this. It actually doesn't smell bad, but it smells like a soup. So I don't know why anybody would want to drink this as a juice, honestly. I'm sure it's just meant to be a mixer for Bloody Marys. But then again, I can't imagine why anybody would willingly consume a Bloody Mary. So I guess that's just a personal taste thing. Giving everything a little mix. 
distribute everything. This already smells so fire. I can smell that cilantro. I smell the onions, the jalapeno. Now that I'm looking at it, I probably could have gone ahead and done the second uh, jalapeno pepper. But you know what? It's fine. Decisions were made. This looks so good. All right. So I think I don't dare to try to put this back into the jar because I think I'm just going to make an unholy mess. And I don't know if this would actually end up fitting in there at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this with saran wrap so that it's like close to the fish. It doesn't have a chance to catch any like air. I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator for an hour. Let me show that to you guys, by the way, because look how pretty that looks. Isn't that amazing? And in an hour, it should be absolutely and completely ready to eat. The fish should be cooked through because of the acid. All of the flavors of the different stuff should be mixed and mingled together. We're going to serve ourselves, enjoy our ceviche, and then we'll put what remains into the jar. So one way or another, I'm going to end up with a jar of ceviche today, guys. Psych, I am my father's daughter, and that means that I did not give in. So I put everything in the jar. And now, this is going to go in the fridge for an hour. That looks bomb. All right, friends, there you have it. It's a very, very easy recipe hands off for the most part. It comes together in no time. It is so delicious. And it's definitely enough for three to four servings if you're having it like as a full meal. Some people like also eat it with like chips and stuff and that would make it stretch even farther. But I honestly don't see any reason why I shouldn't make this like every single week <laughs> this summer. And the ingredients are not that expensive either. Like it's just the perfect recipe, honestly. If you decide to try this for yourself, first off, I very much recommend that you do. And secondly, I'd love for you to come back and let me know how you liked it. If there's another Cuban recipe that you'd like to see me try and I haven't done on the channel yet, let me know your suggestions in the comments. I always love to see what everybody has to say. And as always, I want to thank you so much for being here and watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Hasta la próxima!